over the rising threat of terrorism, insurgency, and military intrusion in governance across Africa. President Bolati Nubuhu is also the chairman of ECOWAS, has called for a united front with the, un with the African Union and United Nations to tackle the issue of proliferation of arms and light weapons in Africa. The president who made the appeal at the conference, at the conference rather, themed the Africa we want and the UN we need, asked the African Union and the United Nations to devise innovative strategies to halt the flow of arms and light weapons into the continent. Joining us in the studio to discuss more is former member of Presidential Committee on Small Arms, Valentin Moru. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. And also joining us to discuss this is uh, essayist Sam Omashe. Good morning. Right. It's good to have you join us. Now, let me begin with you, Valentin. Paint us a picture of how critical or oh, how alarming this situation is when we're talking about proliferation of arms and light weapons across the continent? Well, uh, first off, uh, let me uh, make a correction. I wasn't a member of the Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons. Okay. I was a consultant All right. to Prescom. Now, uh, coming back to the topic, um, across the globe, what we're suffering today, virtually, when you talk about um, insurgency, uh, terrorism, and all of them, is as a result of the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. And this has given concern not just to the uh, United Nations as a body. Uh, the European Union is concerned. ECOWAS is concerned. The AU is also concerned. And over time, the UN has... Um, put some measures in place in order to uh, try and uh, minimize uh, the number of uh, illicit uh, firearms, uh, small arms and light weapons in circulation across the world. And um, Africa, as it were, has suffered its own share. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not limited. Proliferation of small arms and light weapons is not limited to the continent of Africa. Absolutely. It's across the world. But Mr. President is concerned about his continent. Mm. And then um, what he's talking about now is like a corroboration between the UN and the African continent in checkmating the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. Mm. But even so, there has been program put in place by the United Nations and some other organizations like the EU and even ECOWAS. Um, my concern here is that whether the, the continent of Africa has been able to tap into some of those uh, measures put in place by the UN sufficiently to try to reduce or minimize the amount of proliferation of small arms and light weapons we have in this part of the world is another kettle of fish. Mm. For instance, even the regional body, ECOWAS, has a policy that checkmates, that, that supposedly was to help to checkmate the amount of uh, uh, firearms, uh, small arms and firearms that are supposed to come into uh, this part of the world. For instance, as a nation, if you are to buy firearms, small arms, or any of these from any of these manufacturing companies, whether in Europe or in America, mm -hmm. or any of the other continents, you're supposed to go through ECOWAS. Now, when you make your request through ECOWAS, ECOWAS will publish that. And then that publication, I think, is supposed to wait for whether 30 days or thereabout. And then if there are no opposition, they will issue to you what is called exemption certificate. It is with that exemption certificate that the company, the manufacturers of those firearms outside here, other in Europe and in other places, will first get from you before they can even deal with you to sell firearms So you as a nation. Mm. But the greatest challenge we have are not even about those uh, uh, um, foreign manufactured firearms. The bigger challenge we have that the African that the, the African presidents 
should begin to look into are the locally fabricated firearms mm. that are emanating from, in some places, in most villages. Nobody checkmates the amount of those firearms manufactured. There are no codes on them in case you want to do traces. You want to trace them, there's nothing to show for it, and they are very, very cheap. They, they cut across border towns, they cut across villages and many places across the nation. If you look at the movement of firearms, for instance, through the Sahel, you look at the fall of the dump in Libya, you look at the movement. Libya had a large dump. And on record, on record across the world, the amount of firearms, small arms and uh, light weapons in the hands of the non-state actors surpasses those in the hands of the state actors. And so, like I have often said, a man cannot challenge you to give to him what you, want, what you have if he does not show you that matter. So, proliferation of small arms and light weapons has done a lot of damages. It's fueling kidnapping, armed robbery, cultism, um, terrorism, anywhere in the world. Right. So have we in Africa been able to sufficiently work with the AU, particularly even aside from AU, what about other donors in mopping, trying to mop up or stop the movement of this fire? So, so let me ask you that question before I move to Sam now. Have we successfully worked with the AU and all other donors? The answer is obviously no. Right. We'll come to why the lapses, the challenges before we move forward. But let's get Sam's perspective to, to this issue where the president is seeking a solution, perhaps a lasting solution to the free flow of arms and small arms and light weapons across the continent. And he is saying perhaps the way to go is to have the AU and the UN collaborate to come up with some document, perhaps, or something that could stem the tide. I don't think it's about uh, official. No, we have, we have what is obvious to the eyes and those that are not obvious to the eyes. Mm. So what we need is the eye of understanding, mm. to understand where these people are. So the first approach, I think, is intelligence. Now you made a very good point about the non-state actors who are in possession of Of this arms, yes. Yes. We have genius around us. A lot of genius. So if these people can make all of these arms, why can't they become part of the Nigerian Defense Corporation? Mm. Why can't we why can't we look for a way to mob them up? It's part of the wasted genius of Africa. Look at Abba. With all the people who have been able to take Microsoft material and domesticate it and sell it for on the cheap. The last governor of Abia was doing a good job trying to, to try to indigenize the genius and try to leverage them for for development. But he couldn't mm -hmm. go so far. He, he tried his best, couldn't go so far. Uh, that was Ekpeazu. And so this issue of arms, we see them all the time. They make them, they, sometimes we see the catches being uh, uh, unearthed, being exposed, and, and you wonder if we cannot get all of these people and, and give them money, dress them up. It's like poetry dressed in field. I remember reading this book by, um, what do they call it, Peter Abrahams, about a particular uh, seller of ice cream who, who always came out, it was a try story, who always came up with very beautiful phrases. Then he called and said, poetry was dressed in field, but nobody, understood, nobody realized it. Mm. We have geniuses dressed in field, working for only pitans, just to arm people to kill everybody. So why don't you look for a way to mop them up, bring them into a Nigerian Defense Corporation, and then we have a solid one. You said they have more weapons than we have. It becomes cheap. Defense, this industry becomes so robust. And then we get our own homegrown genius. It's part of the wasted genius of Africa. 
So invariably, you're saying we have we should look into homegrown solution that's against looking at the AU UN. Um, Those people they obviously don't know anything about anything. They can't stop them. Mm. That's why I said you have you have what is obvious before our eyes and what is not. So the eye of understanding is what you need now. The so understanding what is really there, mm. where they are. The people who know where they are know where they are. This right. is also a failure, a capital failure of intelligence. If you don't know those who are doing arms under you, then why are you all over the place? The immigration, the uh, customs, the DSS. What are they doing if they cannot get to... Track and trace this person? Exactly, because some of these uh, raw materials are imported. Mm. Somewhere. You got to do arms, you don't, you don't just go to the bush and uh, get things together. You have to get part something from... Uh, East, another thing from the west, another thing from the north, oh. and from the south. Valentin <laughs> uh, is smiling, and I will get his response when we return from this break. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. Before we went on break, we we're looking at uh, the matter of proliferation of small arms and light weapons, and uh, the president looking at uh, a solution where the AU and the UN can come together to address the matter on the continent. And before we went on the break, Sam was talking about we having a homegrown solution to the matter since we know that uh, these weapons are in the hands of non-state actors and that they are even, you know, manufacturing them locally. Why can't we just embrace them into uh, perhaps the military and, you know, have something cheaper? instead of looking out for some solution to the matter of getting weapons, something like that. And I'm asking, is it as easy to track and trace these persons? Because earlier you mentioned that these weapons do not have codes. He mentioned that it was it, this whole issue that we're seeing is a matter of a failure of intelligence. What are we missing? Is it so difficult to track and trace these persons, even without the codes, and also look at adopting them into the system? Before I talk about that, let, let's, let's, um, let's be straight in all of this. I do not understand or really know the, what Mr. President is really looking at when he talks about this uh, collaboration between AU and the UN that has not been there. Mm. I do not understand it. So, for instance, the Center for the uh, Control of uh, the Proliferation of Small Arms and Light Weapons that took over from a presscom that has not been dislodged. Presscom is still there, has not been officially dislodged. Okay. Okay. So I do not really know if they've actually uh, presented documents to Mr. President uh, concerning uh, the collaboration between the AU and the UN, or about the UN's uh, treaties concerning uh, proliferation of small arms and light, light weapons. weapons. Mm -hmm. Not to talk about what they have with the EU. EU is there. The UN has an office in Abuja. The EU is there. They've been sponsoring lots of programs that I have been involved in, mm. you know, at, at different times. You know, coming, coming back to, to, to your question, um, there's, 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 no, there's, no, there's no too much science about it. One, we have proliferation already. First solution is to think of how to mop up these arms from the society. The hands of non-state actors. Yes. We have so much of them in their hands, even so, more sophisticated weapons in their hands. Even they have rocket launchers. Mm. They have rocket launchers, which means they can bring down aircraft. It's as bad as that. What would we be doing if UN has to come in? It means they have to fund programs that will assist in mopping up these uh, firearms in the hands of non-state actors? And then what do you do in return, like Prescom did in the past? Prescom tried a program and they gave back to those of them who were disarmed, not amnesty now. What they gave back to them was um, um, uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, provide means, alternative uh, means of livelihood mm. for them. Now we have very, very, we have uh, various uh, porous borders. Border management has become a problem in Africa, no doubt about that. I have said here before that if you line up the entire numeric strength 
of our immigration, our customs officers, um, DSS, on our border across the four countries where we share borders with, they will not be able to cover the whole of it. Mm. The former president of this country, uh, talking about uh, uh, President Mohamed Dubari, at the time gave up. To me, like he was overwhelmed and said it was only God that could help conquer the movement. And then ECOWAS policies, regional uh, policies in Africa have not also helped. Mm. This free, free movement, okay. gracing, you can grace from Chad to Nigeria. You can grace from Niger to Nigeria. That's why sometimes you say you, sometimes it becomes a bit difficult for our intelligent officers to actually identify the headers, whether they are actually Nigerians or not, when some of these crimes are committed. Because the borders are free for them. And then you see most of these animals carrying huge uh, uh, bags, and they're moving in with these uh, uh, firearms. Mm. So how do you checkmate all of that? Our scanners at the land borders even working. What of the bad the seaports? Are they really working? What about we even have situations where arms are formally, formally, and legally imported, but we discover that from the takeoff point of the manufacturer to the end spot, you may not have the exact number of consignment that left that manufacturers then to where you were supposed to get to. Mm -hmm. So in between, some get missing. Mm -hmm. And so we have dealers who are either registered and are also dealing with the, the non-state actors. Aside from the problem of the locally manufactured ones now that are even worse than what we're talking about. If you look at the kind of um, ammunition that are carried by the terrorists, sometimes they look more sophisticated than the one the state actors are carrying. And so sometimes in, at the, uh, when, they, when they engage themselves at the theater, what do you have? Casualties mm. on the part of the state actors. Right. And so right now, the AU also have their own policy of checkmating all of this. But what is the sincerity? Sometimes even these locally manufactured uh, manufacturers are arrested Mm -hmm. are arrested in quotes. Sometimes you bring them to television, you display what they manufactured and all of that, but what happens at the end of the day? Mm. What happens at the end of the day? Aside from the ones coming in, we had a situation in one of our trainings where uh, the, the factory manufactured uh, weapons were on display and then the locally fabricated ones were on display. It became a big issue trying to differentiate. Perhaps that's why he's saying we should now perhaps look at adopting. Very wonderful suggestion he has made mm. that we have talked about over time, but has government been able to key into it? There was this young man that was arrested. When they went to arrest him, he looked at the weapon that one of the officers carried. He was not, he was not perturbed. He was not disturbed. He looked at the weapon the man was carrying and said, please, could you leave this weapon with me for 24 hours and come back? I'll give you a replica. 24 hours. You were talking about getting uh, the parts, maybe the trigger, raw the bolt, the, the... Raw uh, materials to do, put it together. Raw, the, okay, raw materials in your own words. Yeah. But they, 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 they fabricate all of them. Yeah, but they're putting the parts ready. They fabricate them. Yes, they fabricate <laughs> them. And so the, if a young man says, give me uh, an assault rifle, and in 24 hours, come, I'll, do, I'll, I'll give you a replica. I mean, he has already, he has already. Give it to him, he will dismantle it, dismember the entire thing within seconds, and put the pieces it down for you. Why do you think the government is not keying into this suggestion? Because I've not worked with government before. But from your perspective? Well, I wouldn't know. Maybe for security reasons, or maybe they do not have the capacity to, to pay them. But otherwise, in other climes, mm. when you have these persons, what you do is discover them, mm -hmm. bring them together, and then set up. We have Daikon in, in Kaduna. Mm -hmm. We have that in Kaduna. What are we doing? Is Nigeria not good enough to be a manufacturer? Right a big manufacturer and an exporter. 
of firearms? Mm. The answer is no. We are, we are more than some of these countries that are even manufacturing. We have, we, see, there's no talent you want in the world that you, that you don't get the in best in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No talent that you want. Look at Aba, like he mentioned. What have we done with them? Have we been able to provide electricity? Have we been able to provide electricity? If you bring these persons together, it's not as if our intelligence officers are not working. On daily basis, you hear of uh, busting. Do you know even the terrorists? Over time, have been discovered to be manufacturing their own firearms inside the, de inside the desert. Hmm. The soldiers are military men, gallant military men, have gone there, busted into those places, recovered the things they use in all of that, gas, put everything together, pack them out, arrest all of them, yet... What have we been able to do with those of them we arrested? Some men were arrested in Plateau State who were manufacturing AK-47. AK AK-47 AK is AK-47. It was first manufactured in 1947. Mm. But we have men here. When you saw the AK-47, they chunked out. They, they, they recovered from there. The only difference would be that they don't carry code mm. that would have helped for tracing. Right. So much, a lot on our hands as it is now, Sam. I'm wondering from what he has said, what the way forward is. Yes, you have made suggestion, and he's saying that it is a, a suggestion that has been put forward before government, but government is not seemingly adopting it. I think what the president was saying when he said there should be a UN partnership is that they should go beyond eating meat pies and uh, drinking teas at meetings, and they should really do their work. Right. I don't think they're really doing the work. If Who is not the doing work, the work? The AUU, if they are doing the work, why are there, is there proliferation? Who is not doing the work? The, the partnerships. No, I think... Partnerships are not working. They're just, they're just sitting down in air-conditioned buildings and drinking tea. If not, if not, let them go down to the brass stacks. No, I... I, I find I, out what is going on. I'll give you instances, sir, why I said no. Please, take a walk to the UN's office in, in Abuja. Let them provide you with documents of how much they have done in collaboration with countries in, on the continent in trying to curb this. I know how much the UN did with, the, with Prescom. I know how much EU did with Prescom. I know how much some other donor bodies no, did no, with... No, but what is the problem? Why, why do we still have the proliferation? They have done so much. Because, like one of the things you said, on our own part... Are we truthful? That's what That's you are, you are performing what I'm saying. Not the UN, <laughs> not on the part of the UN. No, I'm not. We poor cooperation. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So that's why. I should go beyond drinking tea and blowing and blowing and using. And doing fancy, the job. And using because, fancy phrases. Because let me, yeah. let me even say this without any fear of evil. Mm. Let me say this here. Over time, we've had bodies. I think Nigeria is about now. It was Nigeria, Angola also. Are the two, we are the two countries. I think Nigeria is about the only body now that does not have a commission in checkmating those activities. What we still have. Now, a bill was raised at the National Assembly. It was a private bill. Okay? That, um, that bill is ready. Ordinarily waiting for the accent of Mr. President. But that bill will, act, act, it will first go to the executive. They will go through it and then send it back to the National Assembly. Now, if it's not, because it's not an executive, uh, a bill from uh, an executive order, which was supposed to emanate from the executive and go to the National Assembly, and when it comes, then they accent. Now, without a commission, a commission now, where there will be budget mm. for that commission to work, we have not had commission in this country. What we've been having are uh, uh, committees, and committees to can do what? To, do what? To, checkmate to checkmate all of this but, but, on, but, but need, on behalf of the country. But you need, but you don't really, you don't. You, uh, it, it's it, a UN's I, recommendation. I understand, I understand what you are saying that uh, you know there have to be a commission, but you know it's just like saying that you don't have a, a particular law for stealing at Ojuelegba. When there is a law, there's already a law to steal. The laws are there. The laws are there. 
the institutions and the committee are there. can implement it. The, the, the DSS can implement what you are saying. No. What they need to do, what they need to do is put their eyes on the ground, do the job. We have had them do it. Look, men will continue to do it. Napoleon said, men are ruled by toys. Once we wake up, we start, start thinking of, like even little boys, and they start thinking of what to put two things together and <laughs> shoot the other person. That would um, <laughs> be a fine place to leave this conversation. There's, 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 there's a limit to which the DSS can do as against what the commission or the, committee. To, the, the, the what's commission, limiting, the, what's committee. limiting the committee? The committee does not have a budget to work. All right. Why the don't committee you budget, depends. Why don't the, you add that budget to DSS? And let them no, the, it's not the function of the DSS. They have a limit to, to check. Yes, the, the function of the DSS so, is to submit intelligence. So now, not to check well, now, the activities of the commission of this. It's not and also. It's not also the responsibility of the police. So your final it's suggestion. It's across the world. Your final suggestion is for us to take this fight seriously. We must have a commission that has a budget to addressing this. You have also, said so. In this days, that in is what. Of, that is what in you said. Of collapsing, in these days of collapsing, <laughs> you are, government, you in these days of collapsing, in these days, in these days of collapsing government and parastatal, why don't you just have an arm of the DSS the, uh, that would do? Uh, eh? no, yes, no, 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 it's a, it, well, it's a it's a long topic. I think because of time, we Our may time not be able to yes really look into that. But some of these other bodies that are mentioned is not really their responsibility. All right, all right. Thank you very much. As recommended much. by the UN, even. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Dalentin Umoru, former consultant to Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons. Thank you as well, Samuel Masri, even though you are still here with us. Uh, thank you, Dalentin. Thank you.